Today on Zener Dillion, I want to talk about the MOSFET touch switch, plus their pros and cons, as well as how to integrate them into your own devices, a lot like this flashlight here, because they can be a handy alternative to using mechanical switches. And unlike those other videos that have nothing but background music, I hope to be comprehensive enough so that you can put them into your own products, instead of feeling like a man alone stranded on an island, his only possession a note that says, Good luck, buddy. Let's quickly go over what a MOSFET is, as it's a pretty simple electronic component to understand. It's basically just a switch that uses a small electric signal to control the flow of a much larger electric current. There are two types of MOSFETs, an N-channel and a P-channel. An N-channel MOSFET controls the flow on the negative side of a circuit, and the P-channel controls the flow on the positive side of the circuit. There are three pins on a MOSFET, source, gate, and drain. The source connects to where the electricity is coming from, so a battery or something else. The drain is where the power comes out of when the MOSFET is turned on, and the gate is what controls whether the MOSFET is on or not. An N-channel MOSFET is turned on when the gate receives a positive signal and turns off when it receives a negative signal. The P-channel MOSFET is turned on with a negative input to the gate and turned off with a positive input to the gate. Here I have a pretty simple setup. I have my power supply here and the MOSFET's connected up to the negative side, which is connected up to the negative side of this LED strip, and the positive side of the LED strip is just connected up to the positive side of my power supply. Now the idea of a MOSFET touch switch is that your body becomes the conductive pathway between the type of signal you want to send to the gate and the gate. So for example, if I want to turn it on, I touch something that's positive and touch the MOSFET gate wire, and it turns on. And if I want to turn it off, I touch the negative and turn it off. You have to think about the MOSFET gate as a tiny capacitor. So, if you want to turn it on, it'll stay on as long as the gate is charged, and it won't turn off until the gate is discharged. Now the problem is, is that the MOSFET gate has a really low value in capacitance, so it's easily influenced. Now, this is a pretty electrically noisy room, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch the MOSFET gate alone, without touching either the positive or negative in the circuit. And you'll notice that the MOSFET will either partially turn on or turn off or go somewhere in between. To give you an idea of how sensitive the MOSFET gate is, I'm going to hold it like this and even moving close to the rest of the circuit will change how much power is going into the MOSFET. So I don't recommend a circuit that has a floating gate like this. I have an isolated circuit here, so that means there's no power supply, so it should cut down on some of the interference. Basically the same thing, I'll touch the positive to turn on the MOSFET gate, and I'll touch the negative to turn off the MOSFET gate. However, it is still susceptible to outside noise. So I'll grab the gate right here, and if it's partially turned on, We can see just how sensitive the MOSFET gate can become. So having a floating gate is not recommended. Now that you understand a little bit more about how a MOSFET touch switch circuit works, I'm going to show you what a couple of other YouTube channels kind of build and some of its other downsides. So here I have a piece of circuit board material, and the middle piece right here is the MOSFET gate, which is close to the source, which will be providing a pull-down signal, and this little plate right here, which is connected up to positive, which will provide our on signal. So if I want to turn it on, I'll put my finger between these two plates, and it will go on. And if I want to turn it off, I'll put my finger on these two plates, and it'll go off. Now, if I put my finger on the center plate alone, you'll see that the LEDs partially turn on. And that's because my body is picking up some of the electrical noise in the room, and the MOSFET gate is also picking up that signal and amplifying it, therefore turning on the LEDs on and off. It's actually 60 hertz line noise coming from some of the electronics around the shop. The other problem with the MOSFET touch switch is that it's very susceptible to things like moisture. So, for example, I'm going to lightly blow on this circuit, and you'll see that it'll partially turn on or completely turn on. So these are very, very sensitive circuits. And if you want reliability, I simply can't recommend them. 
Even though this MOSFET touch switch is very handy to have in simple applications like running a motor or a light, I don't recommend it for very sensitive electronics because a floating gate, which is a gate that's not connected to anything, is very sensitive to outside electrical interference. To help demonstrate that, I've replaced the LED strip with the speaker here. And I want to show you how the MOSFET can amplify the interference that my body is picking up when I touch the gate of the MOSFET. And what you hear is the 60 hertz tone from the noise that my body picks up from the AC in the devices in the room. That's not the kind of power that you want to feed your sensitive electrical devices, such as something like a Raspberry Pi, as it would probably end up frying it. At this point, you might think that I'm trying to discourage you from using a MOSFET touch switch like this in your own projects, and that's not the case. Otherwise, I wouldn't have showed you how these MOSFET touch switches work. There are two clever designs that I want to show you that you can use in your own projects. The first one is this three dash system. It has the gate in the middle and the positive contact on the top and a negative contact on the bottom. The only difference between this circuit and the one that I showed you earlier is that it has two resistors. One resistor goes from the positive connection of the circuit to the positive contact and the other resistor goes from the negative side of the circuit to the negative contact on the bottom. And the reason why these two resistors are put in there is so that if uh, something metal comes in contact with both of them, you won't cause a dead short on your power source. So let me show you how this circuit works. So it's the exact same concept as before. If I touch these two and connect the positive reference to the gate, it turns on, and if I connect the negative reference to the gate, it turns off. The nice thing about this is you can just swipe across it. So you swipe up, it turns on, if you swipe down, it turns off, which has a nice ergonomic feel to it. The other one is this two button system here. And what I've done is I've used two brass inserts that I normally use for holding in machine screws. And I've put pieces of wire inside of them. They're different colors. I've got the red for on and the black for off. The two wires are joined together forming the gate contact and the two brass inserts are the positive and negative reference. Otherwise it's an identical clone to the circuit that I just showed you before. Let me show you how this circuit works. Yeah, both those work very well, and you can use them in your own projects. Now let's go over using a MOSFET as a momentary touch switch, and this particular configuration may look a little strange to some of you, mostly for the fact of using a few shaky diodes instead of using a high value resistor to pull down the MOSFET gate. Now, there are two reasons that I use shaky diodes. The first reason is, is if you're using electronics and you find it broken things, it might be difficult to find a resistor with a very high value. And the second reason is that the resistivity in skin can vary greatly depending on the salt and moisture content. So I just find this to be an easier way. Now, the diodes appear to be backwards, so you wouldn't think that the positive energy that's stored in the gate would go through the diodes in this configuration. However, shocky diodes tend to have a small reverse leakage current and therefore will slowly drain the MOSFET gate. Now, the amount of time that it takes for your MOSFET to drain really depends on the reverse leakage current of the diodes and the capacity of the MOSFET gate. In this case, the MOSFET gate is pretty large, so the gate doesn't drain immediately. I'll show you what I mean by that. You'll see there's a little delay. However, um, if you use a MOSFET that is a lower voltage, you won't see quite the same delay. 
So for example, I have this set up here. It's almost identical to the circuit that I just showed you, however much smaller, using just a MOSFET and a Shockey diode. But because the gate of the MOSFET is so much smaller, it drains much quicker. And this is the setup that I tend to use in making my momentary touch switches. Here's how to integrate a MOSFET touch switch into something like a flashlight. I'll be using a laser pointer in this instance. It's about as smart as giving a monkey a crossbow, but I'm working with what I have. So the general concept of it is that the case is all positive, and this little wire right here goes to the gate of the MOSFET. I have a little plastic insulating tube on the inside, and the idea is that if I touch the positive case and the MOSFET gate wire, the MOSFET will get a positive signal and turn on, and if I let go, the two shocky diodes in there will drain the MOSFET gate. The spring is connected to the MOSFET source, and I have my drain tap up here. That's about it. Let's get it put together. So the first thing I'll be doing is connecting the laser pointer driver to the MOSFET drain. That worked. You know, sometimes you just can't do things the proper way. And now to slide the whole assembly together, so what I'll do, I'll slide it like this. The case will get its positive from this contact right here. Well, the laser driver will. So just like that. Now we can test it out before we glue it all together. Oh, that should work. Let the glue cool down, and uh, that's about it. And that's how to put a touch switch into something like a flashlight. With all the information about MOSFET touch switches that I provided in this video, hopefully now you can add that sense of touch to your own projects. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, stay tuned for more.